returns ownership back. So that is, that's permissible, but it's obviously not ideal. Um, because now, if we, if we have a function that we wanted, you know, if we wanted to take multiple arguments, then we have to essentially like return a tuple of, like, of all the arguments and then, uh, and then reset them. So that is obviously not ideal. Um, so that's where uh, borrowing comes into play. Uh, so if you try to like extend the, the, the physical analogy, uh, you can have a, a function like borrow x instead of taking ownership of it or something.
This is, we, so we wouldn't run into the data rates if we had two threads both reading from the same memory at the same time. But we could if we had two threads writing to, to one memory space at the same time. Uh, so, for example, if anyone's not um, super familiar with data races, uh, if you want to do something relatively trivial, if you want to have a thread that you know, increments some uh, variable that's passed by reference, Pass by reference a thousand times, uh, you spawn two of the threads, then you know the variable should be two thousand values uh, greater than it was before. But oh. <coughs> okay, well, sometimes it's not. <laughs> uh, yeah, when I tested this, it was um, I don't think I ever saw it get two thousand, but that's. It's not really, it's, it's almost worse than it almost never happens, right? Because if it almost never happens, then you're going to have errors 1% of the time that you have a lot of difficulty tracking. Um, so, uh, so that's a, that's a problem. So we'll take a look at the syntax for doing the same thing for us. So the Rust version is a little bit more complicated. Um, and it, it's not actually doing anything that C++ can't. Um, instead of passing a, uh, so instead of passing an integer or an unsigned integer by reference, instead of passing a pointer to an unsigned integer, um, we pass instead uh, an arc, which is an atomic reference counter, uh, to a mutex to an unsigned integer. And the reason we do this, well, these are things that you could do in C++, but the reason we're doing it here is because the Rust compiler uh, refuses to compile unless we do this, right? If we try to pass uh, just a mutex to something that, uh, that is threaded, then it would complain. We try to pass just an integer to something that is threaded, it would complain. Um, so, uh, so that's, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty nice. Um, and the arc and mutex wrappers look pretty similar to the box wrapper. Um, they just, so an, an atomic reference counter is like a, you know, RC is also pretty common, but, um, but arc means that it's, it's safe for, for threading. So this means that it's going to uh, create X, which is um, a reference counted mutex wrapping around an integer. And then in the thread, we're going to call clone, which means that it's going to, uh, so, so keep in mind, the type of X is of type uh, reference to an arc. So cloning an arc uh, creates an, an additional reference. So. Uh, so now we have an, an additional way to access the mutex around the, uh, the i32. Um, so clone doesn't actually clone the data, it just gets another reference for the, the counter to keep track of. And then we call thread.spawn, which is like relatively straightforward syntax for, um, for, a, for a concurrency. And we call move to, uh, to get a copy of everything that this reference is you know, copied into its own context, um, but that doesn't, you know, it, that's fine because the only thing that we're referencing is xref, which is uh, a, you know, an arc, uh, a reference counter to, like, pointing at a mutex. So then we're going to uh, lock the mutex and then unwrap, which means, uh, you know, the lock returns, like, an option or a result or something like that, so we make sure that it's of type OK, um, and we panic if it's not. Uh, and then we can actually change the data. And then, as soon as we go out of scope here, um, that is where the mutex relocks itself. So the mutex relocks as soon as, uh, like, it being unlocked goes out of scope. So, that ends up working out relatively well. You won't run into these errors, so you can be certain you're not. So one other thing that, that I'm going to mention here is that um, I'm going to tie in that uh, like Wikipedia project game thing that I that I worked on a lot uh, last winter break um, because it's kind of relevant here because I for a while I was pretty sure that there was some kind of data race that was corrupting results. Um, I don't remember if I ever found found something like that, but um, but 
but so the gist of it, like the, um, the, the main data structure that's used in that program is an array of, uh, of unsigned integers, or excuse me, of, of, of pointers to structs. So, um, so it's nice that that is relatively bare bones um, because making it really complicated would, uh, would increase complexity. So like if I've got a pointer to, um, to a struct, then that requires eight bytes of memory, right? It's very straightforward, but it's, you know, it's not safe. It's not thread safe.